All right, welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live on this Friday morning, mercifully a Friday morning here. Uh, taking a look at futures, we see we are set uh, for losses on the open markets, reacting a little bit to those comments we heard uh, from St. Louis Fed President James Bullard just about a uh, half hour ago or so. But let's stay on the Fed and talk a little bit more about how uh, investors are thinking through what we learned and what we didn't learn this week. Joining us now to discuss is Joseph Little. He's the Global Chief Strategist at HSBC Global Asset Management. Joe, thanks for uh, jumping on this morning. So let's just start with how you guys have thought about what we heard from the Fed, what you've talked about with your clients, and how big a shift um, you believe it was from the central bank on Wednesday. Thanks, Miles. Nice to hear you. So, yeah, look, I mean, a, a, an interesting week um, for all the reasons that, that you mentioned. We had the comments from Mr. Powell in the press conference, the updated forecasts. I think what the Fed is really responding to is that environment of slightly faster rebound in economic activity, faster data on inflation, maybe a slightly longer transitory phase of ele elevated inflation than many economists expected. And so the Fed quite reasonably, quite, quite rightly, has to adapt and, and adjust to that. We saw higher growth forecasts, higher inflation forecasts in Q4. And really what's got the markets in a little bit of a tiz is this projection for uh, um, uh, bringing forward of interest rate rises in, in, in 20, 2023. So, I mean, as we digest that, I think it's important to uh, set those forecasts alongside Mr. Powell's comments of, of taking some of the projections with a bit of grain of salt. There is a significant amount of uncertainty about the outlook. The current environment is kind of reminiscent of the Bernanke Fed in the aftermath of the financial crisis, where Mr. Bernanke struggled to keep some of the um, uh, uh, other Fed members uh, in line and, and, and on message. So as the Fed begins this process of talking about tapering, there are going to be these phases where sometimes there is some communication challenges, where sometimes where the Fed is talking about risk management, that becomes a little bit more of a challenge for the markets to digest as a message. I'm not sure too much has changed in terms of the outlook uh, um, this week. We're still in the phase where we're talking about tapering. We're looking forward to Jackson Hole and the September FOMC, where we expect the Fed is going to lay out the playbook for what the QE taper uh, looks like, most likely starting with MBS and then delivering that program uh, from the end of this year through 2022. And I think that's still the right working assumption to have. Um, we don't anticipate a big taper tantrum or, or overreaction in the bond market. But I think the environment does leave us still in an, in an environment where the economic expansion is continuing and we should expect higher bond yields, bond yields moving gradually higher uh, over the next six to 12 months. Joe, uh, Joseph, uh, Bullard's comments this morning, President Jim Bullard's comments this morning, do you think that is the growing consensus with inside the Fed? And, and if so, what does that mean to the markets? Well, I think what the market has got to focus on, and, and it's not always e easy, is the uh, evolution of the economic expansion and looking for signals ahead as the tapering uh, um, debate and, and dilemma becomes a bit more front of centre, particularly moving into the August-September period around, around Jackson Hole. We have had a phase where the data has been a little bit all over the place, lots of um, uh, one-off effects, unusual effects, base effects in the economic data. So I think we, we have to um, uh, manage that by, by really uh, um, listening very carefully to the core members of the Fed, Mr. Powell, Mr. Clarida, the, the inner circle. And, and that gives us, the I think, the, the insight in terms of the, the broad trends. Clearly, we're in an economic expansion. The data is, is, is going to continue to improve in GDP. Labor markets are going to heal. But that can take a little bit of time. And that's why uh, uh, this uh, uh, focus from Mr. Powell, Mr. Clarida, the other members, has been emphasizing the fact that they're willing to look through some of the transitory uh, uh, pickup in inflation, focusing on this average inflation targeting uh, um, message as the overarching philosophy. And they're really going to take their time in, in terms of exit from policy. So I think it does mean higher bond yields, uh, but I wouldn't be too alarmist in terms of the messages that we've we've seen this week in terms of viewing it as a meaningful, uh, a really meaningful change in the outlook. I still think we're left with a strong economic expansion, bond yields are moving higher, and then value parts of the equity market are going to continue to uh, uh, perform uh, uh, well on, on a relative basis.
So on that last bit, Joseph, we've seen a little bit of um, muddle, I guess, in the so-called reflation or reopening trade this week, right? We've seen a lot of commodities come down, but we've also seen sort of the tech underperformers start to reassert themselves once again. Do you think that that trade is done? Where do you think we are in, in terms of that reopening trade? Well, the reopening trade has, has really been running uh, at pace in, in markets and also in the economic data, particularly in the leading economies, the US, uh, China, industrial Asia. I'm, I'm here in the UK. We're a little bit further behind in, in the story. But I think the UK and, and industrial Asia and China are really moving into this expansion phase of uh, the business cycle. So we've had the instant recovery, the big bounce back. We're moving into a phase now where economies are going to continue to perform. But it gets a bit choppy for markets because uh, expectations, investor optimism has moved quite a long way. It's quite hard to surprise positive investors, but also because we're seeing policy is in play. Policy normalization is being talked up in Asia. We've got talking about tapering at, at the Fed. That creates some confusing signals for investors, and it creates a slightly more uh, a, a tricky a set of market and macro narratives for us to trade. So we've got to be realistic about the kinds of returns that are achievable at, at, at this point. We've had a great half of the year in the first half. I think maybe it gets a little bit trickier for investors in the second half of the year. But what I would try and do as, as much as possible is, is, is maybe try and look through some of the noise in the data, some of the noise in the in the day-to-day -day commentary, and focus on those core trends. Economic expansion, labor market healing is taking place. That does imply higher bond yields. And it should be a, a, a phase where value names, cyclical names, laggard parts of the equity market, even Europe, is is, is going to be uh, focusing and, and performing uh, really pretty well on, on, on a relative basis. But still favoring equities over fixed income is, is going to be the right, the right strategy, I, I think, for investors during this next period. And, you know, Joe, finally, before we let you go, you something you flagged in, in your note to us was looking at um, the chip shortage and some of the, the structural drivers around that kind of trade. And, and it, it strikes me, and it always does, it happens every so often uh, during the, the flows of an investment year. We start talking about the Fed and macro, and we forget some of these fundamental drivers. But, you know, ultimately, um, it, it seems like that trade and, and Specifically, as you know, as it relates to you know data center build outs and, and electrification of auto fleets, that trade still remains intact. Is that one of those themes in the background that you're kind of talking about um, that remain important to keep in mind when you know we all spend a week being Fed experts? Yeah, Miles, I think that's a great point. So it's very easy to be focused on what's going on in terms of the 10-year bond yield, being Fed experts and, and talking about those trends, and then trying to boil down the market view to some simple value versus growth axis. In, in reality, uh, you know, as I say, I think it's going to get a little bit trickier going forward. Expectations moved a long way. Investor positioning's moved moved a lot. That narrative around inflation has been traded very strongly by the market. So maybe the best strategy is taking a bit more of a barbell approach. Uh, and trying to be nimble in markets is, is, is of course, a, a, a good style to take. But, but for many investors, taking a bit of a barbell approach, focusing on some of those unloved cyclical value names, which have, have lagged and could catch up, is, is part of that strategy. But alongside that, as you say, there are some really important megatrends that are taking place in, in tech, in green tech, uh, in, in, in the tech sector in Asia in particular as well, developments in semiconductors and all of the things that we've become uh, um, uh, focused on in terms of medium term trends are going to remain important. And it's really important not to overlook some of those issues. So if anything, maybe the lesson of this week is a reminder that some of those themes are, are there, they remain in play, they're going to be big, big multi-year themes for uh, economies and for investment markets. And we shouldn't overlook some of the developments that we're seeing in electronic vehicles or semiconductor space, in the tech space generally. We certainly need to be maybe adopting more of a, a barbell approach to make sure that we capture some of those growth themes alongside some of those laggard themes in the investment portfolio. All right, Joseph Little, uh, strategist over at HSBC Global Asset Management. Joe, always great to get your thoughts. Thanks so much for jumping on this morning. I know we'll talk soon. Thanks a lot.